All right, so this is the effects of high school makerspaces uh, by Gavin Crofton. So to get started, what is a makerspace? So this is defined by US News as a place for learning with tools and creativity. Uh, with every school's makerspace is slightly different. Uh, US News gives examples of audiovisual, woodshop, print 3D printing, things of that nature. Uh, so this is also, I'm gonna, to add to that a little bit, it's also a collaborative space where multiple people can come together to work uh, and it has a specific interest to people that are creative and like doing things with their hands, as it's very hands-on. Um, it's very enticing for engineers. It's a place where their ideas can come to life. So getting into why are engineers important? So this is from Engineering Canada, uh, and they give a few reasons. First of all, the opportunity to improve lives. So engineering is huge. It's what develops the world. So we're, and one example of improving lives is like, engineers designing bridges in places like Africa. Uh, that's benefiting those villages and people there. Uh, next, the opportunity to innovate. So there's places like Boston Dynamics working to make things like the robot dog, which are going into uh, construction sites and hazardous zones that humans would not be safe to go into. On top of that, protecting public interests, uh, protecting public and its interests. So this is things like Lockheed Martin, North of Grumman, who are working to protect the United States through the military uh, and things of that nature. That leads to the purpose of this entire research project, which is to bring more people into engineering because of its advancement and quality of life it provides for society. So this gets into my research question. What are the lasting effects of introducing high schoolers to makerspaces? This is very important as it it's researching into a gap that hasn't been studied before. A lot of times, there are a lot of makerspaces in places like colleges, and these have been heavily studied for their impacts and what that leads to uh, engineering and things like that in college. However, this has not been done on a high school scale because makerspaces in high school are not as common due to the lack of funding for some high schools. This gets into my literature route, starting with the collegiate aspect of makerspaces. So according to Wolzinski, uh, a researcher at Yale University, makerspaces at Yale provide an uh, environment that, help, that is beneficial to learning and their grades. Uh, this is due to things like being able to be, get hands on with the uh, activities that they're doing in their classes. So, for example, in engineering class, they'll be doing physics demonstrations and things of that nature. And by, and be, by able to have access to a thing like a makerspace, you're able to manufacture your tests and demos better, and it's a lot more hands-on experience, which leads into the study from Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt study, uh, study shows that people that are hands-on with uh, their learning are actually more likely to remember the things that they're learning and uh, provides better education overall, uh, which leads to the study from Jayton. Uh, provides, this provide, makerspaces provide students better opportunity to learn and help retain the knowledge. This goes back onto the hands-on activities and things that they're actually doing. The actual demonstrations are what students remember and not things in a textbook. Uh, this actually, and then my next part of my literature review is implementation in schools. Across the entire United States, according to the uh, Educational Theater Association, there are 26,000 theater programs across the United States. This is important because theater has one of the huge part of makerspace that is part of it. And that is set building. Set building is huge when it comes to makerspaces as it's multiple people coming to develop a creative idea, which is exactly what a makerspace is. Uh, on top of that, there's approximately 3,340 high school robotics teams across the United States. This is a statistic from First Inspires, who runs the largest robotics uh, competition events for all high schoolers across the nation and the world. Now this comes together because both of these activities require makerspaces, which means that these schools already have the ability to implement a class uh, that would introduce uh, high schoolers to makerspaces, which would be very important in this research uh, study. My method. So to start, I'm surveying uh, a class uh, at a high school called Intro to Innovative Technology. This is a requirement for those students to graduate, and it focuses on a few things. One of those main things is problem solving, which is hand in hand with engineering. One of the biggest parts of engineering for all fields is problem solving, and so that's why this class is super important on that. It focuses on uh, self-pacing and self-teaching, which is why it requires so much problem solving. On top of that, it introduces them to some engineering topics like 3D design, uh, coding, and manufacturing. All these super important in actual engineering fields as well. My method collection. So there are a few, dem my demographics are high school students from freshman to senior. Uh, I, evaluated, I surveyed all these students uh, an anonymous survey that did not require me to have an IRB. On top of that, it uh, focused on a few main questions. 
um, as well as provided uh, many Likert scale questions to provide correlational analysis later, later as well. Overall, I had 220 respondents, but from those 220, I could only use 183 due to the some of, due to some of the students not have not taking the intro tech course because they're freshmen and it's a semester long class. My method and analysis. So my analysis included a few things. First of all, some of the questions were not Likert scale questions, and they were actually questions pointed to um, asking if a certain if the class. Uh, did something for them a certain way. So one of those questions was pursuing of whether or not the help class helped you understand whether or not you would want to pursue engineering down the line. And so that question was actually, uh, it was a Likert scale question, but instead of using that for correlational analysis, uh, I used, I averaged that score to see the overall consensus of that. On top of that, I used uh, Pearson's R correlation coefficient, used to identify uh, relations among the data as well. I had six main variables that I tested uh, in the questions to see uh, what was what the benefits of the, the class would provide. So let's get into my data. So the first for average I was talking to you about with the, whether or not you want to pursue a major in engineering down the line. So uh, it was on a five point scale Likert system and the overall average was 3.2, which is actually above three, which means that over, <coughs> overall the consensus was that people agreed that the class was helpful in determining whether or not they would want to pursue education, which is very important. Now this next part leads to bringing more engineers into the field, and overall, people answered 91, 91 people answered inspired, 84 people answered discouraged. Overall, it was a slightly more people, slightly more people were inspired. So, um, yeah, slightly more people were inspired to want to do engineering down the line. Uh, this is my correlational analysis. So, like I said, I did freshman through senior. I also averaged all their correlational uh, scores to see uh, the overall consensus from that as well. Uh, freshmen tended to have the least likely and the, the lowest correlations in all of this, uh, but getting started. So the second column is whether it is the pursuing education, pursuing engineering down the line, and whether or not the class gave them a basic understanding of what the concepts, of the concepts taught in that class. So overall, it was actually very low uh, correlation uh, in that data, uh, which, yeah, and then Next up in the third column, it was pursuing education and whether or not the class gave them insights into what engineering was. So this uh, was because um, if they didn't get insights into what engineering was, they wouldn't actually be able to know uh, whether or not they'd want to pursue it down the line. Uh, this actually had a very high uh, correlation uh, answer, uh, because which makes sense uh, as well. And then lastly, uh, the, la the last column was uh, understanding and insights. So these two, the, whether or not understanding the class content and whether or not gave them insights, uh, these two kind of go hand in hand. Um, I just wanted to make sure that both the students were answering these around the same and whether to make sure that would apply to the rest of the questions I asked. And that also had a very high correlation value. So getting into my discussion. Um, so in my first uh, set of data with the average, people were more likely to pursue engineering, which is very important, it was 3.2. Uh, which is very good because of, I had 183 respondents, so the more more people answering likely shows that it, it was very much more likely. Um, overall, people did find the class inspiring, even though it was less. Uh, it wasn't that big of a jump as the pursuing and pursuing engineering. Uh, this is actually very good though because it shows that the class can change to make it more inspiring for other people and less discouraging. Some people actually found the class to be very difficult. That was something that in my study as well. Uh, and so if we can bring the difficulty of the class down a little bit, it might inspire more people to think that, oh, that I am capable of this and inspire them to get into this field more. Uh, people found, the, also people did find the class useful uh, for later down the line and in, in, in their other high school classes, which is very important. And um, yeah. Now my correlational analysis uh, or discussion. Each class tended to have largely different correlational <coughs> values which was actually very strange. I was, I was expecting them to be somewhat similar, but they were all extremely different. Seniors actually tended to have a very high correlational value, whereas freshmen tended to have very low uh, in all of the things I analyzed. On top of that, uh, it provided a lot of interesting insights into, the, the, into each class as well, with some classes thinking, oh yeah, it was very helpful, or the freshman in that case saying, no, it was not very helpful. Uh, and the class has changed over the past few years, so it's interesting to see the difference in that. Uh, on top of that, 
um, pursuing it. So getting into my actual correlational analysis, uh, pursuing and understanding. That makes sense that, uh, that, that, that actually surprised me that the uh, correlational value for that was low. I was assuming that if the insights were high, that people, it would actually help them understand whether or not they would go into engineering, but it was actually low. Uh, the people that, it was more likely that people did not give a, people that didn't have an understanding would actually say it did help them, which was weird. Uh, next up, pursuing and insights. Uh, people uh, that had an actual, people that answered that gave them insights uh, did answer that it gave them uh, whether uh, an answer on whether or not they want to pursue engineering, which does make sense. And then understanding and insights. These two went hand in hand, and it made sense that they were high as well. Now, what were the limitations in my project? So I, had, I did have a relatively large sample size, um, but of that sample size, I was only able to use some of that data because some of the students didn't, hadn't taken the class yet. On top of that, uh, my demographics were kind of mixed. I had a lot more freshmen and sophomores than I had juniors and seniors. Uh, so that could have skewed some of the data as well. And also, after uh, the, I was analyzing some of the data, I realized that some of the questions I asked were flawed and they couldn't actually be used in my analysis. Now, what are the implications of my data? Uh, so I evaluated uh, the benefits of Makerspace class offers, uh, that being uh, it does help people understand whether or not they would want to go into engineering. It actually inspired a lot of people in going, wanting to go into engineering as well, which is very beneficial to bringing more people into the engineering field as well. This actually coincided with the collegiate research that I had as well, where that people that had experience with Makerspaces actually wanted to go in there to continue their education or education in engineering. Uh, some further research that I think should be done is uh, what the career paths that people actually end up fully going on to. That's not something I could fully study because I'm based in a high school uh, and I don't have access to what college students started in high school and then what they're at now. Uh, and then I would want to research uh, how a different class structure would also affect the results. Like, I, like you saw, could the class structure be changed that it would inspire more people into engineering instead of discouraging as well. Conclusion, I, um, like I talked about, uh, it, it actually co aligned with a lot of the research I had from colleges uh, that it tended to actually benefit people in engineering and want people and make people want to go into it. Uh, it also showed the effects that the class had. It provided people benefit down the line in their high school and also gave people a basic understanding and showed them that they can do hard things and problem solving. Uh, and this is exactly what a class like this should provide. Uh, this is why it should be implemented more across things, uh, high schools as it's very beneficial in bringing more people 